The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. If you're building, or buying, or selling a home, the real estate crew's got news for you at the Real Estate House Party. With attorney Rick Carter. Real Estate House Party. Paralegal Kathy Holsthausen. Real Estate House Party. Come in, have fun. And comedian Tony V. Now, here's real estate attorney Rick Carter. Welcome and thanks for joining us here on the Real Estate House Party. You hit your mark today. I hit my mark. I'm hitting, good. trying to really hit my good. marks good. today. And your, your posture looks unbelievable I'm since you've been practicing that. I'm working on my that. posture. Oop, and we all I know. Chrissy would on. like us to be a little tiny bit more professional. But I know. I know. You know what, we you supposed can't, to have hellbows <clears throat> on the table. Oh, I you can't, I've let that ship go That's good. Yeah, that's <laughs> you can't long teach, ago. You can't teach old dogs new tricks. I know. I know. I know. So So it is a treat that... Just the two of you on. Yeah. I know. We seem to get a lot of real estate covered when it's just the three of us. Yeah. That's what I feel. We don't have anybody with their nonsense. And with their non and then <laughs> getting us off the rails. <laughs> so so unprofessional. So I, know. I, I believe you left us with a tease. We left a tease. So. Oh, 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 oh. All right, you have the answer? So the question was, and I know people I know. They've been hanging on. They've been me. hanging. Yeah. They've been what all week. president's family lost some of their land? Thank you for doing that because I always forget. I, I know. <laughs> Just early signs of um, <laughs> dementia. And yeah, uh, old age dementia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what? 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 President's family lost a lot of land twice. Twice. Due oh, to title how do you lose <laughs> <laughs> Twice. Take it back. Not, not very I mean, I'm <laughs> constantly losing my keys, but I think it's just, <laughs> just yeah. one loss. Yeah, it's not like you lose <laughs> right. your home. Right. And somehow get it back right. and then What's lose. the biggest? All right, I'll, well, I'll answer that, and then I'll have another question for you. Yeah. I'm very unrelated. I would have said it was George Washington just because of the I cherry I would have said tree. Madison. But I know the real answer. Abe Lincoln. Right. So Why? Do well, you know why? I just it wasn't. Back then, there was no surveying. They probably just went out and said, "All right, I own this property." And other, you know, it's not wasn't the most exact science in right, the world. Right. So. Well, you just call Artie Januario just... up and ask how it how it was done Hand in the olden days. Yeah. Artie is pretty good about that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah he but he researched his own who, property. Who was after uh, Abe Lincoln's log cabin? Didn't he just have a log cabin? <laughs> wasn't that his? Was it, I thought wasn't how many people were were how many in rooms? the world how in, many the, rooms? in the country at that time? Yeah, six. Wow, maybe six. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So six people took his land. Yeah. yeah. How did he get well, it back? The five others. <laughs> how did he get it back? This is the most questions you guys have ever yeah. asked on a on well, a real right. estate. How did he get it back and then lose it again? I know. Oh no, then he probably got other land and then uh, they lost that too. Oh, so it wasn't the same. It's not land. the same. Yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah, because if you screwed that up twice, that's on you. Yeah, that is totally on you. Not sure who the closing attorney was on yeah, that one. Uh, it wasn't Carter <laughs> Law. It wasn't Carter Law. I'll tell you that. That's 781 944 So the reason we're talking about this is, we I think we l- ended the last show, is, you know, if you're buying a house, um, you know, you really want to protect your most valuable possession, right? Yep. And for someone, an attorney that's not a real estate attorney or for a real estate agent or your uncle or your best friend to say, you don't need owner's title insurance. It's a waste of money. They don't know what they are talking about. Right. So you they hit on a lot of good points. Yeah. So you ought to call a real estate law office, not necessarily call a law office. No, list. but ask. But, you can, but, but you but, should. Um, should ask. You really should. You should, but but the but point is, is, any real no, it's estate a good point. attorney. It should be a real estate attorney call. Yes. Not. That's what I mean. Not any good real estate not attorney cousin Vinny. will never. Right. Yeah. Well, he was a good lawyer, but listen. No, for criminal. Once your drunk uncle says you don't need, you need. <laughs> right. That, that's all you need. Or your eighty-year-old father. We've had father, more people or, or, with right. the drunken uncles that are supposedly experts in the on home inspector. Everything. Remember that guy? That, oh yeah. Uh, no, but hang yeah, on. Yeah. Let me finish my no, thought yeah, yeah. before it leaves. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it will. And you're worried about my dementia? Or, I know. Go I, know. Ahead. No, I know. I never say anything about me, my dementia. It's very obvious. <laughs> um, the thing is, like, we're not going to, you know, jam it down your throat. What we're going to do is give you facts yep. and give you the opportunity to make an educated decision as opposed to your drunk uncle's decision. Right. Or, right. like, because I would never want to tell somebody not to get owner's title insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and then have something go bad. Right. Because the point, course. but the point of owner's title insurance, yeah. it's to insure things that cannot be detected at the registry of deeds. So what yeah. would be some examples? Like a missing heir in yep. a probate. Yeah. Um, yep. A forged document yep. in your chain of title. Then someone says, well, I don't need owner's title insurance. I'm buying a brand new house. Wrong. Eh. Wrong. So it's not, it's not, it's you not on do the a... house. It's on the land that the house sits on. And how many years do you go back? No, uh, 50 years yeah. in the state of Massachusetts. So we are certifying title, right? Yeah. Yep. They, they say, I don't want owner's title insurance. I'm just coming back after you. Well, guess well, what? Certain things if we can't get. If you're 28 years old or 30 years old, what are the chances of if you were going to stay in that house for 30 years? What I know where chances? this is headed. Yeah. That I might not be around. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, that's, I don't mean I don't mean that's, not that's, on this earth, but you, you there's a chance you might be retired. I, I, right. I, I doubt it. Or somewhere but, else. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> Mentally somewhere. <laughs> anyway, so they said we'll just use your liability. Now, what does it? In, serious question. What does title insurance protect you from? It protects your land. Right. The 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 basically it, it, it says it insures your your fifty year title search. Right. That everything was done right and. If, if there's something... So the wrong person, you know, didn't... didn't, Or the right person didn't sign off on the deed or a fraudulent deed or on that deed there was a missing description. You see this a lot of time in Massachusetts properties where they might leave off a lot. Um, well, we just have one a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago or whatever. I don't yeah. have any... Right, right. You know, time. A while yeah. ago. Yeah. A while ago. Thank you. <laughs> that, um, like... Mm. Um, Janie Smith deeded into her daughter Carrie Smith, but guess who signed the deed? Another who Smith. should be signing the deed? Janie Smith. No, Carrie, the seller. Seller. Seller, yeah. Carrie, buyer. Oh, yeah. Janie. Janie. Yeah, yeah, we're not using Carrie. real names. Janie, yeah, yeah. Janie should have signed the deed deeding over to her daughter Carrie, but um, guess, but but Carrie signed the deed. Right. And honestly, that is a mistake. That somebody should have picked up on yep, through yep. the chains of title, but guess right. what? It was never picked up. Right. So right. that's not even a valid deed. So Janie Carrie didn't even own it to sell it right. to the next yep. people. Right. So yeah, yeah. so that is an example of what owner's title. Listen, let's be honest. Most people don't read half the shit they're supposed oh, to man. read to sign. You know. So, so you have to trust professionals to do that for you. Well, and, and but the thing is, like, the, the attorney before us and the attorney before us, they no probably didn't it. see it because, right. uh, you know, when you're looking at the chain of title, even the title examiner didn't pick up on it because it was just such an innocuous little mistake, even right. though it's a huge mistake. Sure, last names are the same and it's Right, and your and eyes the, go yeah, to sure. it or whatever. But So the point is... Title insurance would fix that problem or jump in there and get that problem fixed so that you have marketable title so you can sell it to somebody else. All right. So you hit, you guys hit a few points. I yep. know we're a little bit off. What we, but one point, obviously, get the owner's title insurance. Second point, you hit on it when, when you started this about brokers. They should be the source to the source. Right. And not the source to the information. Right. Someone, oh, that's a good, that's yeah, a good yeah. point. So someone shouldn't be... You know, who's not qualified to say about title insurance, say about taxes, give them legal advice. Uh, and, and honestly, this is the answer any real estate attorney um, can answer. The real estate agent should say, you know what, that's a great question, and I know who can answer that for you, and pass on the information so that you can get valid information. But like, owner's title insurance is optional. To have somebody sway you and say it's a waste of money right. before you even have had the opportunity to discuss it with or a to decide professional whether we all know, and make your own decision. We all know insurance, you know, a lot of times doesn't come into play. But that one time it does come into play, it, it's, it's huge. And I'll give you one more example. This has just happened in the COVID years and where I think title insurance actually saved the industry because the probate courts were all shut down. Right. All right. Uh, our title examiners couldn't get into uh, the probate records. Sometimes the probate, probate records has a lot to do with our title exam. So what we would do is ask the seller if they had a title insurance policy, an owner's title insurance policy, we would send it to our title insurance people and say, listen, we can't get a hold of the probate. Um, will you make a business decision and give us a clean policy because someone already has an owner's title policy? 
um, it pretty much saved a lot of our titles. And right. they would usually say, yeah. yes. If you have an okay. owner's title, Paul's. Right. Yeah, it's good enough for And us. it carries over. So, so, like, so they, we piggybacked on their owner's title insurance policy, maybe through another company. But then our company was, felt good about that. And then if there was a problem going down the road, the next buyer's title insurance company would say, oh, did you have an owner's policy? And you say, yes, I did. And it kind of sends it, it through as a, in a positive fashion. Right. You know what would uh, help with the signing of things? Yeah. If at the beginning you legally assign someone like one of those made-up names so it jumps out at you. Yeah. Like this was signed by Herbie Hind. <laughs> her behind her behind signed this and that would jump right up right. oh IP Daily signed off on this you know there are others but well, there's a lot those of other nicer yeah, those, but, those are the nicest we'd ones we'd have to do I a total trigger warning yeah, yeah, yeah. it would take down the yeah, whole show yeah, yeah yeah you wouldn't want to get the hunt family involved no no no, no. is that Mike's mother Who's yeah, yeah. yeah. alright yeah. alright so uh <laughs> Or the Hertz family. Yeah, involved. you don't want to get them involved either. Yeah, you were one of those guys as a little teenager calling up the. Oh yes, the okay. teacher. Of course. I oh yeah. Was. No calling and uh, calling say, the Can pharmacy. you page the following person? Oh uh, yes. No, it's, do you have um, Prince Albert <laughs> in, in the, the can? can? Let him out. Let him out. You're showing your age. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't so even you, know you, who you, Prince Albert is. But. Yeah. So you actually kid on a couple of things. Uh, title insurance might be involved if there's some scams. I know we. Every show we throw out a couple of scams. I'll throw a couple more new ones I've heard of lately. Uh, one is someone coming up to an elderly person said, you know, uh, whatever. I think it was for a mortgage relief assistance. Yeah. They said just sign this form. She signs it, but the guy takes the second page to the form and attaches it to a deed and then records that. So. That's a problem. So there was a missing form that she didn't sign. Exactly. No, well, he's, he she's, did a switcheroo. Oh, the yeah, old yeah. bait and switch. Yeah, yeah. switch yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's another one, unrelated to title insurance, but uh, uh, washing of checks. You know what that is? Where they... Oh, laundering? Uh, no, a little different. Oh. <laughs> they literally, um, like, it's because we all have, like, you know, cash checks from, from an individual sitting around. Right. So what they do is they literally wash everything off, however they do it. Um, with off, some chemical With solution. some chemical, yeah. but leave the signature on and then start typing in what they want. What they one want. of my attorney yeah. buddies. That did. happens. Yeah. yeah, one of my attorney did buddies. Did it happen to him? Yeah, and luckily they caught it because what this guy did, he put in a new check number, but luckily that check number had already been cashed before. Nice. So they caught the guy. He was in New York trying to cash a Thirteen thousand dollar check. Uh, he has a little video of it. So um, that's and what is, do they arrest that guy? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 What do they call that? Well, it's larceny. Uh, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a felony. Yeah. Felony. Oh, that's yeah. That's a problem. But Fraud. usually, usually with um, a lot of these schemes, you can't catch the guy doing it. Yeah. Well, because they have different aliases and they might not even be legal in this country or something like that, and so they're hard to find. So uh, Kathy gave us story about someone was trying to hit one of our clients and the follow-up to that was i called the fbi after that really yeah and they said uh i told them what happened they don't care do they they didn't care no they said well how much money did you guys lose i said we well, didn't lose anything how much did your client lose i said they didn't lose anything we caught it yeah exactly caught it. Well, but she I s- in theory lost twenty six hundred dollars or whatever the check amount was what's that she, in theory, lost her money because she thought she had it to pay for her mother's funeral. Oh, that was, oh, that was the other one, but the oh. wire fraud one. Oh. I called the FBI about the wire yeah. fraud, and the guy says, well, you know, how much did you lose? I said, nothing, and he says, are, are you kidding me? We're working on the billions of dollars we have lost, so right. let's, let's give our attention to that. So, And um, honestly, like, um, you can't be too careful. You cannot make assumptions you, you, so when I, so lately when I've been emailing our clients, I'm like, I am the point person on this closing. In other words, don't right. bother Rick anymore. Right. right. And well, Rick is just going to send me the email. He's not even going to respond. He's right. going to send it directly it to, you to me. Right. You're the right. point person. Right. <clears throat> but that's what happens when there's too many um, cooks in the kitchen. Right. Rick might say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll get right on this and him getting on it is sending mm-hmm. it to you. Well, in the example you had given, the girl, the girl said, well, Rick told me. Yes. This is and, so, 
And, Rick, and, they're there, and I was on the phone. They kept saying, Rick, can you get off the phone? There's someone at the line. And finally I got off. They said, did you authorize this to get changed to another account? I said, what are you talking about? And thankfully they had the wrong account number or it would have gone. It would like, have gone yeah, it was missing a digit or right. something. And they were screaming in the background. The bar was, Yeah. <coughs> excuse me, irate. But the point was they, her, she was getting emails from me. Right. And then she was supposedly getting emails from Rick Carter, but, right. it, but it wasn't Rick Carter. It was somebody right. else. So, right. but Another luckily we live, we work in an office that that it was easily open walls. Yeah, we don't it out. we don't email each other. We just yell yeah. out, "Hey, <laughs> hey, did you hey, who's, Rick? Dealing, <laughs> who's dealing with this?" Network? She wanted to cut a hole in the wall at one point, so with you could a just sawzall. So it's don't even start. Yeah. Don't even start. So, Sounds yeah. like a good idea. Anytime, uh, yeah. anytime a sawzall is involved, <laughs> yeah. It's a good I wanted idea. to put a hole in the wall so that I could just stare at him when he wouldn't answer me. Yeah. Could I, <laughs> what's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm sure. I'm sure your stare could have bore a hole in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, it has actually. Yeah, it really Rick has. Rick actually but... knows when he's in trouble oh, yeah, with yeah. me. No, that's a good point. You could have just. Did a stare all the way around a around a square and just have it drop out. <laughs> Laser. You know what else is? Uh, you gotta watch if there's anything on your checking account or your credit card with pennies. Pennies. Yeah. What do you mean? If you get a charge or a check, supposedly clears for like ninety two cents. They're testing your account. Oh, I've seen that. Like one dollar go through. Yeah. But valid one dollar go. Like somebody. Yeah, they'll have a up. valid. Yeah. Somebody charged, remember I said, is yeah. someone going on vacation around here? Rick goes, what do you mean? I go, somebody charged Virgin Airlines tickets to our account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and that was somebody trying to, that got your number? Yeah. Yeah, so. People. I know. People. We've had, you know, petty, p- little petty things that I get cleared right. up and the bank reimburses us for them, but. Um, How about that poor bank that I think we talked, we we do a lot of shows and we do a lot of discussions, so I never know if it's on this show or not. But the one where the, the bank wired the million dollars to the attorney, you know how we have to get money from our bank? Yeah. For the buyer's pro, you know, the yeah. mortgage. They wired a million dollars to the closing attorney, and it wasn't the closing attorney. How did that happen? The, the, the lender didn't follow the simply, they should have called the attorney and said, are you sure these are your wiring instructions? And some some lenders call every single time. They should. Time. They should, the double check. They lost a million dollars. They tried to pin it You're on the attorney. You're kidding inter- me. No, a million dollars. How did they pin it on the attorney? Because inter- somebody, somebody got into the other yeah, account. switched it around. Switched it around so <laughs> yeah. it looked like it was coming from said, that oh, attorney. Yeah, we'll it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. one little um, nuance to that like that woman, for example, yep. thinking she's hearing from Rick Carter. Right. Yep. So what they'll do is um, they basically copy your your um, yeah, yeah. what looks to be coming from Kathy Holtzhauser. Right. Oh yeah, I've dealt with her before, and that's her signature, right. and that's her right. Right. Mo. Right. But right. What, so it'll say Kathy Holtzhauser, but in parentheses it will have some other random email. Yes, I see. So yeah, it, yeah. So, so when on, you click return. Or, or reply. If you hit reply, it's It'll not go it's going to that, that crazy yeah, yeah, place. Crazy but yeah, yeah. some of these people are looking at their emails quickly or yeah, on their yeah. phone and they're not paying attention. But we've been advised and trained. A million times. Uh, and advised and trained to, to check over every, every email. And yeah. I bet there were some emails that were legit that we've missed. Oh, yeah. Because s- sometimes oh, yeah. they look so real. Yeah, yeah. I actually do the, any attorney's office a favor and call up and said. I think you guys have been hacked, and right. and yeah, other yeah. people have done the same to us. Like you right. know what I mean? But we had we had one bro. Uh, I'm sorry, attorney whose middle initial was W. Uh, they changed it to V, but kept everything else the same, and got her you know changed her email address to let's just make up a no, you know Jane V Doe at gmail.com or right. Jane W. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they said, oh, all right, that's that looks like... It looks like, it's like really quickly, quickly on a phone sure. or when you're in a yeah, hurry you're or you're, hurry, yeah. you're yeah. doing two things at once or whatever. So we actually, you know, when you're going through your emails, it's more of a laborious um, practice now because you have to be very clear on who it's coming from. And, and where it's going. And our office is very, very good about it. Like yeah. Rick will send it to me and say... I know it kind of looks legit, <laughs> I know, yeah. um, but, but but there's there's like different fonts right. or um, there's if something. If something hits you wrong, you should question right, it. Right, right, yeah. right. The other one is the payoff. So um, 
these these hackers send it to a fake payoff letter because we always have to get payoff letters to pay off someone's loan, right? Uh, to make sure the new guy has clear titles. So we get payoff letters, and so they've been hacking in, getting fake payoff letters because they take a payoff letter, right. like a real payoff letter, and they just start changing the numbers around, right? And then have it wired to, to their, their, account. their account. I know you. Did you speaking of it? I got a payoff today from. That you forwarded to, to me from a seller's attorney's office. Did that come to you securely? I don't know. I'll check it out. We'll check it out. Okay. I know. I know. But, oof. What does it Thank I God I'm on strike. They <laughs> said this work is. You know what? Hey, <laughs> hey. You just gave me an idea. Have What's me come in and read your stuff? No, I was going to go on strike. Go on strike. <laughs> Again, fine line. You know what? <laughs> Going on strike means you've come back to work. <laughs> I have. Oh, sorry. Was that I too worked much? last too week, much. and too I much? worked. <laughs> this is my second day. I know. I'm very week. impressed. <laughs> you said you have no more vacation time till the end yeah, of the year. Yeah, but I think I have um, Family Leave Act something. Yeah, you've already taken that. She thinks she works at Raytheon. Where she you, does. You get six weeks a year. Didn't you write the book? Yeah, she wrote the employee handbook. How bad is that? Yeah, you can have you can have appendix th- appendicitis three times in the same year t- in a calendar year. No, nope. yeah. in your lifetime. In your lifetime. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know she had five grandmothers die. It's ten sad. kids. You ten can't kids. question. <laughs> no, you can't question you can't anything. Question I'll, t- I'll no, call no. your I'll know. haul your butt right into court. Yes. I know. You, you can't even look the, at me cross-eyed. You should see the questions now. You you can only ask potential tenants now or. Or people applying for a job. Uh, I heard this, and this is this is true. This isn't a gag or anything. Someone was uh, complaining because she has time blindness. Time blindness. And she won't, I do too. Uh, you, <laughs> you have day blindness. What is what is time? <laughs> so so evidently, and this is this wasn't a gag or something it's like that. It's a legit thing. Where she went in there, and um, the employer ended up telling about it. It was the the girl says. I want to have some accommodations because I have time blindness. I can't always get to work on time. And I don't want it's a it's a it's an issue I have. It's I want to have some accommodations for that. And she was serious about it. It was almost like that millennial one you you, you said oh, yeah. that me before. <gasps> At eight in the morning? Well that doesn't really <laughs> work. Doesn't for me. work. <laughs> So there's a, I um, want to talk to the HR there's department. Another one. You don't work here. You don't have an HR <laughs> I'm, department. I'm feeling unsafe right now. We're not validated. <laughs> but time blindness, have you ever heard of that no, one before? No, that's a good well, one. I don't know. It's kind of like when I call you up and I say, hi, Rick. And you're like, hey, what's up? I'm like, I don't think I'm going to make it to work today. He says, oh, how come? And I say, well, I can't see. He goes, you can't see. I go, yeah, I can't see coming to work today. <laughs> ah. <laughs> she does have the toe now. When yeah. I when I get a call like an hour before she's probably supposed to go, Hi. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How's and everything you, going? You know. <laughs> Is there anything uh, need my, You know, do you anything, need anything from me? Anything I'm there. <laughs> need my immediate attention in the next four so hours? So I'm going to throw her off say, no, but in 10 minutes I might. So I'll let you know. Yeah. Then I, I'll be home in 10 minutes oh, yeah. and I can use my home office. Yeah. You know how many offices we got to we got to try to get uh, lazy ass disease <laughs> uh, registered with the medical people. So well, a long time ago, <laughs> yeah. I, I used to. Uh, I, oh, you listen, boy. you can't ask me about this, but I, I got a very, uh, a, a very unique situation. I, I suffer from lazy ass. Everyone does, <laughs> and I don't want any derogatory statements no, about it because it's very question, offensive. Don't question me any further. Just know it's and, a real. And check medi- up your employee handbook real- on how you handle lazy ass disease. Do you remember um, a long time ago? I used to uh, teach at Northeastern a paralegal. Supposedly, program. no, I did. No, right. she went. All yeah, right. I went. <laughs> she went. I showed up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and right before one of the classes had started, the new semester. I got an email from somebody at Northeastern, and they said, you have a student in your class that has, um, I don't know what it is, that, that disease that you fall asleep. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Narcolepsy. Narcolepsy. Yeah, yeah. I was going to call it something else, but um, that's it. And you need to make it, we, we as a call, uh, university we need have to, to make accommodation. Uh, accommodation. Sure. And I'm like, Jesus. Right, so I'm like, okay, I can do that. The reason he has narcolepsy or whatever it is yeah. is because he's too busy 
fooling around. It, you know, when he was awake, he wasn't paying attention. And then he'd sleep through my entire three-hour yeah. lecture. Yeah. And then he expected me to stay after. No, it ended at nine at night. Yeah. He expected me to when stay. When he woke up. When he woke up, he expected me to tell him everything I taught the class for no. three hours. No. No. But he was an annoying student. It wasn't like, yeah. it was just a crush. It wasn't somebody who was... Se- seriously, serious. and yeah. honestly, if you fall asleep in a real estate law office, or oh, you can see that any law office for that matter, yeah. um, you're not gonna you're not gonna stay employed. It's not always the most ri- riveting content. No, I mean just because we make it fun. <laughs> and but if you want to get a passing <laughs> grade, fucking boring. You might wanna you might wanna stay awake in the class. Yeah. <laughs> we used to have an attorney who used to fall asleep every once in a while. Little, Every once in a while. Literally, the drool would be yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, did, I did feel bad for him because he was in the office that yeah, had yeah, the Yeah, we, we got real busy. We, we gave him the kitchen area, which was pretty small anyway. So yeah. it was like And everybody's in six. there like heating up their tuna fish casserole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he slept through that. He was, oh, my he God. Must have a real I used to go, I used yeah. to go, come here, guys. It is literally like this. I know. I know. Wake up! I was... Uh, <laughs> doing a show in Vegas one at the Riv years ago, and there was a someone sleeping in oh, my at show. The show. Yeah, we, of course, made fun of it and whatever. Yeah, yeah. And the one, it was a woman. She woke up and she goes, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry." You know, yeah, she yeah. was very apologetic. And I go, "No, I, I actually take it as a compliment that you're so comfortable with me." <laughs> <laughs> that you felt you could nap during my set. I could almost. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I said, you know, uh, just down the block, uh, John Witherspoon is playing at the Tropicana. And if you want a real good sleep, <laughs> you could go see him. <laughs> and then literally the next day, I was having lunch with a bunch of comedians. And John Witherspoon no. was at the table <laughs> being a little bit cool to me. <laughs> <laughs> and, it must have got back And it him. got back to he, he goes I heard what you said last night and I go We're comedians We're I trying go, to make people laugh it's I up. go Uh huh He goes It's very funny I go Thank you He goes I don't like it But it's very funny <laughs> Oh poor John Witherspoon yeah. He's very funny too By the way or Not was. as funny as you though. No no What's the worst That ever got around to You know Some of you guys Where You know Some of the Some of the Acts you probably don't don't care for a little bit. Oh, d- please don't get me started. Yeah, on don't that. get him started. It's a whole nother show. <laughs> but I, off I, the air. <laughs> I one time, I one time in Vegas had to follow. Uh, oh God, uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Oh. oh boy! After he did twenty five minutes of bleaching, talking about bleaching your nether regions. Oh wow! Oh. Twenty five minutes it of it. Twenty five minutes of. I know what you're talking about. Of, yeah. of bleaching. Yeah. And, and it was just, <laughs> and you know, the first two minutes, people are going, oh, okay, that, you know, but, tw- tw- 25 wow. solid minutes. Wow. And funny guy, yeah, yeah, not yeah. taking anything yeah, away yeah, from yeah. him. But, yeah. And the manager's coming up to me going, Tony, you're next. And I go, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm going to fall asleep <laughs> first, yeah, yeah. take a little nap. I, you know. although, and, and although, so, although the bar was pretty low yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah. Right. So I get up on stage and I go, well, I take it all your questions about bleaching have been answered. Uh, if not, I'm happy to go into it a little deeper. Uh, but I think we're okay with that. And then it was fine. It was it, it, actually a relief. Some of the best shows you had, uh, you guys had a show in Boston. It was kind of like for very close friends and family. I forgot who it was for, but... Um, very entertaining because you guys can really say what really is on oh, your mind. Oh, what's on our mind? Yeah. You know, right. yep. You, yep. You, you had that he that, can't say out in public. Right, right. Yeah. I think you had a cup, uh, some young younger couple in front of you, and you were at, you had a Beverly Hillbillies joke. Yeah, we had. They had no it. idea no, had who the Beverly Hillbillies yeah, sure. was. No, no idea who None. Jethro was. I don't. No. I don't. No. I know. So. All right. No, um, you gotta you gotta watch your references, or at least explain. Them. Well, yeah. now nowadays, so, especially some of my friends who were still doing Gilligan's yeah. Island, <laughs> <laughs> or one of your friends that still does the Canadian, what is it, um, Canada Canada Dry and Canadian is oh, like Johnny all the other can other Canadian food. Um, oh. <laughs> oh, Don Gavin does the Canadian stuff where I. Canadian he goes, food. He goes, I love the national anthem. No, I used to do that. That was me. No. Yes. 
I don't like Canada because they have no food. Yeah. All they got is the ginger ale, and uh, the <laughs> bacon, and the ginger ale. <laughs> yeah. But like you I can't offend. That in years. You, you can't, can't offend no. people. You can't no. offend people anymore. No. Don Gavin would say, "Oh, I love their inspiring na- national anthem." Oh, oh, Canada. <laughs> and then inevitably, someone would say, "Well, what about poutine?" And I go, "You know what that is? It's French fries with gravy and cheese on it." I go, that's a delicacy. <laughs> why, why not just grab a stick of butter and right. jam and it in your aorta? Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. that's disgusting. <laughs> I've never had it. All uh, right, so um, our takeaway what? today, <laughs> our takeaway today is you need owner's title insurance. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. And don't, don't, be don't be scammed. Don't be scammed. But on, honestly, like, if you don't want owner's title insurance, make it your decision based on all of your history. And let me reading, show you all the notes we could have gone to today. All right, we gotta go. We, but we gotta go. Maybe I got we'll save shit it. to do. We'll save it for another show. But thank you very much for Jan- God joining bless us here you all. on the real estate <laughs> <laughs> real estate house party. Thank you, Kathy. Can you even say that? God bless you. Oh, I don't know. Tony V. So. Whatever you believe in, bless. All right, whatever we can correctly <laughs> say on our sign-offs. Here you go. See you next week here on the real estate house party. Woo! The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.